Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's another prophetic series and we are talking about how to prophesy global predictions accurately. Prophetic people are given the opportunity by God to be able to make global predictions and come back with accurate results when they do in scripture. So we had Bible time great prophets like Daniel, uh, like Isaiah, like Jeremiah, and like Ezekiel, and the host of others, making these global predictions in scripture and coming back with accuracy. I mean, 100% accuracy in the sense that what they said came to pass exactly as they said, and then the prediction came to pass at the time speculated by the prophets. Of course, the major prophets of old had something they scarcely distinguish between their prophecy of now and a prophecy of a hundred years into the future. That's one thing about them that we know, but that's beyond our scope for this piece. In this piece, I'm going to be giving you some key tips about what it takes to prophesy global predictions accurately. Um, I have had to guard some of my students privately, I mean prophets and apostles around the world, privately on how to make global predictions and I give them assignments. They go do these assignments and they come back to me. Uh, we have uh, recently one of these, uh, I wouldn't mention for security reasons, uh, uh, two nations that are at headlock. I gave one of my students an assignment about that and he saw it vividly how it was going to happen, give me back his report. And then this week we saw it happen between the two nations. And uh, we've had uh, a number of those. So how do we do these things? Let's go back to the Bible. The Bible isn't uh, mysterious as some people see it. We can see these things there in the Bible. There are three ways that global predictions can be made for scope here in this video. <laughs> of course, because we can go deeper than that. Three ways that global predictions can be made by prophetic people led by the Holy Spirit of God. The first is uh, bet for the mission. There are prophetic folks that have been given to this world like angels who only came to make a particular prediction and watch it happen and retire home. An example of such prophet was John the Baptizer. He came for a specific prediction. I baptize you with water, but he that comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That's Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Give that. First hand. So the man came to make prediction as a forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was it. But he had to be born first and born into the right family. Gathered the prophetic materials relevant because his father, Zechariah, a priest by extension, was a prophet. So imagine a priest like Zechariah who was a prophet because if he wasn't a prophet, he couldn't have had that kind of forensic encounter with angel Gabriel that detailed the processes that would be involved with the birth of his son, John the Baptist. So it means that John the Baptist had something to glean on or learn from his father, Zechariah. Let me stop there. So there are those that are born make prediction that's what they're programmed for biologically so they are biological plant or machine given to this what to make uh, predictions number two spontaneous revelation um a lot of things prophetically happen spontaneously and most prophetic predictions in scripture came to be that way where a prophet because of his consecration his depth with the Spirit of God that decides to open his eyes or ears to hear about something that is about to happen in a distant country or in a distant future. Even if it's in your country, but it's going to be an issue that will tingle the ear when people hear of it. It's a global prediction, see. The fact that it was predicted before it came to be makes it a global prediction so uh people like isaiah prophesying in isaiah chapter 40 
5 about the birth of Cyrus, that's spontaneous revelation. I found Cyrus, my servant, with my and I've anointed him, and I will uphold his right hand to do this and to do this. I will subdue kings or nations before him. And uh, God said the rest of the things that were going to be happening. We gathered that this prophecy came to pass after 150 years later. But this Isaiah the prophet prophesied in the nation of Judah, when Israel and Judah had separated into two distinct nations. And Isaiah was a court prophet, not just a freelance prophet, a court prophet. And Isaiah made that prediction. And then, much later, Judah was captured into Babylon. And then Babylon was captured by the medo persian empires. That's from Medes to Persia. And then it happened that uh, Cyrus was born and became the king of uh, 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 um, during the medo persian empire stuff. This man was great at predicting, making that prediction into a distant 150 years. There are mathematics to these that prophets do to get, come back with these. Because you must be positioned to be the one that catches a spontaneous revelation. The last in this scope, which is my favorite, happened to be the place where uh, Daniel comes in. The prophet comes in. In Daniel chapter 3 and verse 29, the entire uh, a picture came through the entire chapter, but we want to pick something very relevant here. When Daniel spoke to the king Nebuchadnezzar, he said, As for you, O king, let's go there. As for you, O king, your thoughts came into your mind upon your bird, what should come to pass hereafter, and he that reveals secrets make known to you what shall come to pass. So even Nebuchadnezzar was given the privilege to. Uh, catch a vision that was meant to detail global prediction. The only thing with that was that he didn't have the interpretation, so he became a half baked prophet. <laughs> For Daniel, he could catch that vision as well as interpret it. That's the difference between Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel here. So Nebuchadnezzar caught the vision, but he couldn't interpret it. Daniel came in, uh, caught the vision. A second time, that's himself afresh, and then interpreted it. So the same thing Nebuchadnezzar caught. Daniel caught and then got the interpretation. That's what made Daniel a prophet. Yeah. But this one is curious revelation seeker. C-R-S. That's the mm, platform that makes a room for the highest number and the most uh, profound uh, global predictions in the prophetic circles. So when you see uh, prophets that are able to make predictions this way like Daniel did. In other words, what Nebuchadnezzar saw here that was going to come to pass that Nebuchadnezzar did not understand and could and did not even, in fact, uh, detail it does narrate the dream to Daniel before Daniel was able to see what the dream was and then by catching the revelation again or the vision again and then interpreting it indicates that let's put Nebuchadnezzar out of the whole picture Daniel caught a fresh vision and interpreted it and it came to pass so Nebuchadnezzar was driven from among men and was in the bush for a period of uh, about uh, uh, seven years or 12 years as the case may be and then God brought him out after that he had uh, his kingdom was taken he was restored back to his kingdom when God had shown him that he, he God in heaven alone is the king of all the earth and uh, owns the kingdoms of the earth and gives it to whoever he wants according to the interpretation that Daniel gave to that vision that Nebuchadnezzar supposedly had. And of course, who knows, were it, was it not for the accuracy of Daniel, we wouldn't have even believed Nebuchadnezzar. But Daniel is an accurate prophet. So when he gave the uh, detail, the narration of the vision, Nebuchadnezzar bought into it. Yes, exactly what I saw. Yeah, I believe Daniel. I don't believe Nebuchadnezzar. So it was Daniel that caught the vision. It was Daniel that interpreted the vision. And the vision was a global prediction. And it came to pass. And until today, it is a global matter that what happened to Nebuchadnezzar was predicted to Daniel uh, by Daniel. And Daniel actually got it forensic and then accurate. And it was a global subject. So today, prophets can still make global predictions. Let's say earthquake is going to happen in this country. Elections are coming up in this country. This is the person that's going to win the elections. Uh, let's say... Uh, this is going to be the next king of so, so, so country. Uh, the government of this country is going to change maybe from democracy to military uh, and likes and the likes. 
now some kind of technology is going to come up there's going to be a pandemic disease coming up there's going to be a global kind of revival there's going to be a guy that will be given met with specific name somebody's going to die as so time maybe a, 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 a public figure in the in, on earth is going to die so so time. okay like what bank is going to change the administration and so so person is going to be the next leader of what bank all these things can be done by prophets who know the mathematics it is the mathematics that i uh that you can't handle in a, a simple uh, short piece like this. That's why we make out time to sit down. Solomon said I was my father's only son and I sat by his side. So you sit by the side of the elders to get some of this secret. What is? What are the keys that you engage to come back with these things? I mean, the prophetic stuff is a uh, realm is mechanical. You can operate it if you got the prophetic secret. Whether you prophesying already, or you were just coming into the prophetic, and you would want to catch the understanding or the depth of what the prophetic is, just to enrich yourself or to be able to know who is a true prophet or who is not a true prophet by their fruits. Jesus said, mind you, you will know them. So in either case or any way or any case, as said, global predictions are still possible when you are schooled to do so. God bless you. I want to stop here and bring upon you the grace to prophesy with accuracy in jesus mighty name i want to present to you my most recent uh, certificate course which is micro forensic process this is the place where i'm going to be teaching systematic processes that is involved with picking detailed uh prophecy beyond what we did in the certificate course in forensic prophecy at this point i'm going to be taking it uh, like uh connecting the dots between what i did in the certificate course in forensic prophecy the diploma course in forensic prophecy now into uh the systematic forensic prophecy course now into micro forensic prophecy and then unlock or expose you to what it actually takes to make profound global predictions and then come back with accuracy uh if you're interested in any of the courses at all you can sign up by picking the whatsapp contact right before you on the screen or in the pinned uh comment section of the apostle ramon Ida ministries below this video see you in the class as we journey together in shiloh's